I get a lot of letters from my uh, legions upon legions of adoring fans. Um, here's one. Uh, Dear Doctor, you hate children, you hate animals, you are a racist, sexist, egregiously misinformed lunatic, uh, with a pathological mistrust of all human interaction. Uh, do you have other people in your personal life? And if so, how on earth do they justify calling themselves associates of such an obliquely sociopathic misanthrope? Love and hugs, Eamon Holmes. Well, Eamon, <laughs> you raise a very good point, as always. And the fact is, uh, the internet is not real. None of the human-shaped entities you see that have been willingly put on the internet are real. No matter how obsessed they appear to be with themselves and the frivolous little details of their personal lives, you're never actually seeing an accurate portrayal of an IRL personality. Especially not on YouTube, because a person talking to a camera uses different bits of their brain from a person talking face to face. The difference is a slight, but you know, easily crucial enough to essentially form a different, a separate personality. That's why most people, when you put a camera on them, they just sort of freak out and freeze and sort of climb up or hide or run away or whatever, because they're, you know, out of touch with that particular uh, daemon. But, some people uh, have, a, have a daemon that they're perfectly in touch with, but it's exactly the same as their real life personality. It's, but, it, but it's still separate, if you see what I mean. It's basically, if, if you could clone yourself, and you could have another you, uh, but, but you could alter the clone in any way you wanted. You can make it funnier, you can make it louder, bigger, you can give it wings, you could give it a pussy on each foot, you could go nuts. No, these people change nothing at all. <laughs> Just want an exact replica of themselves. People who come to the internet to be themselves are simply incapable of imagining anything else. You're not here to be yourself. You're in the real world to be yourself. And you should save the being yourself for the real world. You're on the internet to be something better. Or something much, much worse. Or both. Or neither. Or neither both nor neither. You're not here to talk about yourself, and you're definitely not here to talk about people in your personal life. Because this isn't speaking. This is writing. It gets written onto a computer, you see, and you perform it with the, the knowledge, nay, the proviso, that it gets written onto a computer, that's what the process is. So this is technically writing, and when you're writing, it's absolutely imperative that you do not write about people you know. Uh, well, put it this way, people uh, tend, if, they, if a person knows the person who's written something and they read it, they tend to be on the lookout for things that might be about them, consciously or otherwise, or about people they know. <clears throat> you know, if you write a, a, a song with the word you in it, you know, someone, someone, if I can go, it's not about me. It seems utterly inconceivable to non-writers that you can just generalize an emotion or invent a character. They think it's like painting. If you've painted it, then it must have existed. No, I made it up. It's not difficult. You can't just say, get over yourself to these people, because that just makes them think even harder about themselves. They go, shit, get over myself. You mean, you're right. It's all about myself. <gasps> you know, it just pushes them further down the fucking rabbit hole. You can't reason people out of their fantasy disco mirror ball introspection. You've just got to learn to write about issues, you know, actual issues that matter to people. Issues of exoteric significance. Writing about people you know is pointless. It's absurd. It's, when you take an objective, out-of-body look at what you're doing, you're sort of doing this. You know, imagine, imagine you're a monkey or a caveman, and all you know is this direct communication. You know, if you're pissed off with someone, you go, I've been I'm pissed off at you, or whatever. And then all of a sudden, someone does this. You'd be like, what? You, what the fuck is that? What are you doing? We were having an argument, and now all of a sudden, you know, yeah, what the fuck is that? It, is that your emotions? Is that what your emotions have become? This little thing, what the fuck is... That's the saddest thing I've ever... That's the saddest, creepiest... <laughs> most definitively antisocial thing I've ever seen in my life. You've lost your emotions. You've trapped them in that little fucking piece of paper. What is that? Now, if you've got something to say to a person about a personal thing, say it to that person. Don't fucking bitch about it to other people. And definitely don't go eking it out onto a flat surface and fucking shelving it. That's not where it belongs. And it's not what belongs there. Do you know what we call someone? who bitches 
We've got a word for it. You know what it is? It's the tip of your tongue, isn't it? Bitch! That's right. And last time I checked, being a bitch sucks. Yeah? A hundred percent of all disputes ever to occur in human history are traceable back to an event in which someone was being a little bitch about something. Bitching solves nothing. It only spreads bad shit around where it doesn't belong. If someone really is so shit that y you think they're worth bitching about, if so if they're if they're, if you then surely, if they're that shit, then it will be obvious to other people how shit they are, and there's no point in bitching about them. In fact, the more worthy a person is of your bitching, the less need there is to fucking bitch about them. The whole graph is a big fucking chunk of pointlessness. Do you get me? Do you get me? I mean, what, did you, what, what do you do if you catch a disease? Or have an allergic reaction to something. Do you, do you go up to the first person you see and cough in their face? Oh my, this prostate just threw up in my ass and made my breath smell of rotten apples. Check it out. <laughs> you know, if, if you're allergic to shrimp and you eat a shrimp and your face does the thing and it swells up to the size of a fridge, do you turn to the person next to you and go, Shrimp, shrimp, you must understand my pain. <laughs> No, because the the guy sat next to you is now having his own little fucking <laughs> trauma. He's already reliving this memory for the first of a million times thanks to you. Yeah, you know, every time he sees a shrimp, he's gonna have a fucking panic attack. No, you've multiplied the problem. It's not just wasted energy; it's counterproductive. You know what? It, you've got a plan in place. You go to the source of the problem, and if you can't get an answer from that, you go to a fucking professional. Look, I I love the variety of the human condition as, as much as the next guy. This whole whirlwind of conscious and subconscious warping and weathering of our sort of behavioural patterns is its fascinating. But don't bitch, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> Bitching is not an integral part of human interaction. It's a misfiring byproduct. It's a, a side effect of having emotional intelligence. But it's optional. It can be bypassed. It's a lot like global warming, in that sense. So sort of, you got to do your bit for global bitching. <clears throat> you know, saving the Earth's all well and good, but if we can't learn to get along with each other, then we're fucked no matter where we are in the universe. And don't give me excuses like you can't help bitching. Bollocks. There's a conscious decision there every time. It's Bitching is man-made, but that doesn't mean it's human nature. We can stop it. It just takes a little bit of collective willpower, right? Think only of this. If you notice something bad about someone, right, if it's worth saying, it's worth saying to that person. If it's not worth saying, shut the fuck up. You don't have to vocalise every nagging doubt you have about a person. You can just fucking think about something else. And it'll just drift away into the back of your memory like every other insignificant observation you make. I'm not talking about bottling shit up, alright? I'm talking about letting shit go. If you grow new shit, it'll push the new sh the old shit out. Yeah, it, well, it's all shit, basically, is what I'm... <laughs> saying, but the thing about shit is you get rid of it by flushing it down the toilet. You do not get rid of it by smearing it on your neighbour's face. Unless you are French. So in answer to your question, Eamon, <laughs> no, I have no personal life. For I am not an human. I am an troll with an human face. If anyone's watching this, anyone who knows me, anyone who knows um, the origin of the human face, or has ever met the origin of this human face, and at any point during the witnessing of this channel, um, uh, you've thought to yourself, is he talking about me? Yes, I am. I'm talking about you and you only. Now, most of you will um, <clears throat> understand the paradox. But I'd like to think there's a small handful of you that have already fallen into it. So he is talking about me, but how did he know? Why would he? It's not about you. It doesn't even concern you. I don't talk about anyone. I just talk to anyone. Never tell anyone anything. If you do, you only end up missing them. This is not to be taken seriously. Seriously.